He's nearly a century old. I don't run out of gas. I don't mean me, the tractor. <laughs> that doesn't stop this man from helping his neighbors clean up after Hurricane Matthew. I get choked up with great people. Everybody helps each other out here. That's it. Plus, author Emily Lay joins us to talk about juggling the multiple roles women face today on today's 700 Club Interactive. Well, welcome to the show. As thousands of people along the southeastern coast of Florida continue cleaning up, one man proves you're never too old to love your neighbor. Bill Wheeler is just months away from his 99th birthday, and he's not letting age keep him from cleaning up and mowing wow. neighbors' yards. Why do it? Because I love them and I think they love me. I can say a lot more, but that's it. They're wonderful people. You just don't know. I get choked up. They're great people. Everybody helps each other out here. That's it. That's easy. I flew airplanes for a living. Try that. Military airplanes. This is easy. <laughs> Flying airplanes is not easy. For him to come out and mow his yard, then our next door neighbors, and now he's out here on our yard, and he's still going. <laughs> If I could be like him when he's when I'm that old, I'll be happy. <laughs> he's amazing. <laughs> I mean, I, I want to do it. Uh, I wouldn't have it any other way. But you know, the young people learn from the old people, and that's anyway. I love it. I love to be outdoors. Good Lord's blessed me, so give a little back. I don't run out of gas. I don't mean me. <laughs> the tractor. <laughs> <laughs> that could go either way, though. I love that. <laughs> Makes me want to go fly military planes if you're going to get that kind of endurance out of it. Unbelievable. Uh, what a great at guy. At 99, yeah. you're mowing the neighbor's yard. Yep. You go, Bill. That's <laughs> and, a wonderful and thing. And enjoying it. <laughs> yeah. And then saying, that, you know, giving credit to God. Yeah. Uh, what a wonderful thing. It really is. Well, if those who pray together stay together, how about those who compete together? This past week, the 17th annual, get this, wife carrying competition was held in Sunday River, Maine. 44 couples from all over the United States battled it out. The top prize, five times the wife's weight in cash. Elliot and Gianna Story of Westbrook, Maine, took home six hundred and sixty-five dollars. Boy, you gotta, you gotta want people to be able to figure out what your weight is, right? And a chance to compete in the World Championships. Who knew? In yeah. Finland next year. Is there a spiritual lesson here? I don't know. I think my wife carrying stopped at the threshold. Yeah, he ain't uh, heavy. He's my brother. I don't know. <laughs> Boy, he's laboring on. Whoa. Uh, there's our champion. Good grief, Mabel. <laughs> the indignity of it all. Would you hang upside down? Yeah. No. <laughs> I, no. Can't, no. I can't see that. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> well, since we're talking about love, are you familiar with this tradition? Couples attach love locks on the Brooklyn Bridge, and, and the tradition <laughs> supposedly started in Paris. So, so it, it symbolizes everlasting love. And while love may last forever, the locks do not. Recently, there were so many locks on a wire that it snapped, uh, and that started the Department of Transportation to begin handing out fines for anyone that puts a lock on a bridge. Wow. It's engineering. It can only take so much weight, and then it's going to start to buckle, and we need to take care of these things. No more locks on the bridge. <laughs> Well, more than 8,000 locks have been removed this year alone. And I, I, I didn't know this about Brooklyn. I've been to Europe, and you can go to bridges in Italy, and you see this. And, really? I've never um, heard of this. There's this uh, famous bridge in Rome that's got all these locks all over it, and it's the tradition that our, our love is forever. Wow, and the bridge has held up. Yeah, a long time. It's, so it, Brooklyn, man uh, up here yeah. with your bridges. I mean, <laughs> we need stronger steel. That? That's right. <laughs> Maybe iron. <laughs> <laughs> a kind of cool idea. Well, Chris Pratt is one of Hollywood's most popular stars. You know him from Jurassic World and most recently The Magnificent Seven. Well, Chris is doing some magnificent things away from the camera. Earlier this week, he visited Seattle Children's Hospital and shared some photos from his visit. 
This is Madison, who's currently battling cancer. Pratt posted on Instagram, quote, what an awesome kid with such a beautiful smile. She's a lover of art and fashion, and she's going places. Thank you, Seattle Children's Hospital, for the opportunity to come by and brighten some days. My heart is full. He also added a quote from Proverbs, which says, don't withhold good from those to whom it is due when it is in the power of your hand to do it. You can also see more uh, children who were blessed by his encouragement. Uh, he took some time in the hospital and went from room to room and saw a lot of children and encouraged a lot of people, blessed go, a lot of, yes, here, here. What a wonderful thing to do. And it's something that we can all do. Uh, if you want to visit those in, in the hospital, mm -hmm. all you have to do is ask for permission. And trust me, they will give it to you. <laughs> and uh, I've, I've always encouraged people, if you want to learn how to pray, uh, just go hang out in the hospital emergency room. Yeah. You'll have a lot of opportunity and uh, a lot of opportunity to do some good. Mm -hmm. Well, fragments of what could be the oldest copy of the Quran were found recently in England. The pages were discovered bound inside another copy of the Quran at the library of the University of Birmingham. Carbon dating suggests that this copy may predate the prophet Muhammad. And if true, that would contradict Islamic beliefs of the text's origin. And the, the carbon dating, just to be really accurate here, yes, it could predate, but more likely it, it happened during his lifetime. The reason this is important is that, uh, according to Islamic tradition, the Quran was handed down in an oral tradition. It was spoken mm -hmm. by men who heard it from Muhammad directly. And then after his de death, uh, a caliph said, we need to collect these. Uh, and that collection predates, the, uh, is postdates the uh, age of this manuscript. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's why it's calling into question. Yeah. Um, but from the other side, you can say it, it validates uh, that because it, it, it does predate supposedly the, 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 the writing of the first one. It's just saying, well, earlier text wrote it down, or at least portions. I think carbon dating is confusing to a lot of us. You know, something is stated as though this validates it and it's fact, and then maybe maybe two years, five years, ten years later, they come out and say, oops, we made a mistake by about a million years. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, when you get into radiometric dating, um, you have to assume that radioactive decay is an absolute constant, mm -hmm. uh, which according to physics, uh, particularly for the last few thousand years, in the origin of the universe is a constant, I don't know, uh, I don't think anyone will ever know, uh, but Not sure we're supposed to. The, the, reason, <laughs> the reason you find such huge disparities is both the testing method, what mm -hmm. was the sample accurate, mm -hmm. uh, Shroud of Turin went through a lot, what, did they take proper samples or did they take a sample of a patch? Um, you get into, a, you have to really get into the science and realize it's more of an art yeah. than an exact an science. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. not, it's not math. Though. It's kind of like cooking. <laughs> That's why you <laughs> it, like cooking. It involves, <laughs> it involves chemistry and physics and there's a lot to it. Yeah. So, um, but it is interesting that they found that these are written on animal skin and that's why they're able to, to date it. So the animal was uh, alive at a certain period of time, more likely than not, uh, during Muhammad's lifetime. Well, today we're praying for America and we're concluding our 40-day Pray for America campaign. And if you want to join in with us, all you have to do is call us, 1-800-700-7000, or go to PrayForAmerica.com, and there you can see how we're filling up the map. We now have over 120,000 people across the United States uh, also people praying around the world. So uh, this is an important time for our country. We're facing a very contentious uh, election. And my prayer is that after the election, whoever wins, can we come together as a people? We face very serious challenges, uh, terrorism being one, the economy being another. Uh, what's going to happen in Syria? What's going to happen in Turkey? What's going to happen with Israel? Uh, these are very contentious times. We need to pray that America would be strong. If America falls, uh, the world becomes a very dangerous place. And so if you want to be involved in praying for America, 
I encourage you to continue after the 40 days are over um, because we need prayer. Amen. It's a time to do this. Well, she's a wife, a mother, an entrepreneur, and a designer, among other things. So how does Emily Lay find time to do it all and do it well? She's going to tell us the secret when we return. <laughs> Well, how does a woman with 24 hours in a day accomplish all of the things on her list? Author Emily Lay says, with a lot of grace. Like so many women, Emily Lay has felt the pressure of trying to do it all and do it all perfectly. She's an author, the founder and creative director of a multi-million dollar business and a busy wife and mom of three. After a while, the pressure of juggling everything became too much for Emily to bear. I decided that I'll hold myself to a standard of grace, not perfection, that I was going to just be the best I could be and make the important stuff happen. In her new book, Grace, Not Perfection, she shares biblical wisdom and practical steps that will help you simplify your routine and make room for what really matters. Emily Lay is here today. We welcome you to the show. Thank you. Simplify sounds good. Thank you. It does. <laughs> a breath of fresh air. Yes. You know, my daughter-in-law, one of my daughters-in-law and I were talking just this past week about perfectionism because if it's something that you struggle with, mm -hmm. um, we say it's a curse, right. but we kind of feel okay about it. It's one of those curses right. that seems like maybe there's a good side to it. <laughs> right, right. Well, I think that we have all gotten to this place where we feel like it's the norm mm -hmm. to be comparing ourselves and trying so hard to keep up and to portray the image that we have it all together. How did you get out from under that? I mean, you share in the book that, you know, you, you can get pretty frazzled trying to be oh, yeah. on the top of the heap all the time. Oh, all the time. You know, I think I just had to um, implement routines that worked for us, mm -hmm. real tactical systems, um, like doing our laundry every day so that we don't have a giant pile on yeah. Sundays. Now that still happens sometimes. Yes. It's where the grace comes in. Yes. It's okay. But finding ways that work for our family so that we can keep the wheels moving. You've got great little tidbits of wisdom, like use what works for you, let the rest go. I mean, yeah. sometimes as women, we almost need permission yeah. to do that. I totally agree. You know, I really feel like we need to support each other as women, <laughs> yes, as the sisterhood, and <laughs> say, it's okay. Yeah. We yeah. don't have to have it all together all the time. It's exhausting. And sometimes you're talking about exhaustion, and then you talk in the book about the peril of trying to draw from a dry well. Yes. How do you keep from letting your well get dry so that you can savor life and the moment and the chaos? Right. We have to continually fill our well with the good things, with truth, with rest, with good food, mm -hmm. with the things that inspire us, like reading. Yeah. Um, that's very important. So often we make sure our kids or the people we love have everything they need yeah. and we forget ourselves. You know, I laughed as I was reading your book when you talked about getting your closet organized. Right. You, said, you were talking <laughs> about getting rid of things and you said, get rid of those things that are two sizes smaller than where you are now yes. because it's a constant judgment of your present state. You right. don't even think, you think you're being practical. You know, right. well, what if I lose and right. I have to think of, I mean, right. you, you, those are the kind of practical things that you say, make it okay to be you. Absolutely. And when there are less distractions, I don't want to walk in my closet and remember yeah. the size I was in college. Yeah. I want to walk in my closet and feel confident in who I am right now, who yes. God made me to be. Yeah. It's also hard when, you know, most of the most of the hangers are the ones yeah. that you're <laughs> waiting to go back to. And then there are three or four at the end that are today. Absolutely. <laughs> every every woman, I think, um, needs a support system. You yes. know, I did, I'm sure men do too, but they don't seem to to congregate with friends like we do in right. the same way. But friends are really important. Very, very. How do you utilize friendships in your life in a way that makes you a blessing and blesses you? I really feel like we um, need a village. Yeah. And they say it takes a village to raise mm -hmm. a child, but I think it takes a village to do life well. Yeah. And that means having friends who support and encourage you, friends that you can pour into as well. Mm -hmm. And when you bring that tribe around you and you all have you know similar hurts, that's beautiful, yeah. you know, and it just empowers us. So you have a successful business. 
You have three children, do. a busy household. How do you keep all the plates spinning at the same time? <laughs> and I'm sure there are moments when they don't. Oh, absolutely. I give myself a lot of grace and I, you know, bring help in when I need it. I'm not afraid to outsource. I also have just found um, systems that work. And for me, I use our Simplify Planner to keep track of my days. Talk you know, about that because you, you really did simplify it. Sometimes I open those planners up yes. and I just close them again going, <laughs> it's one more to-do list. Right, you know? right. I needed a place that would allow me to spill everything that felt overwhelming in my brain and heart onto paper. Mm -hmm. I needed a place to get everything out. And I also needed something that felt like a fresh start. Mm -hmm. So we designed the Simplified Planner very minimal on purpose so that every woman can use it to her needs and to fit her circumstances and her seasons also. And you've kept the focus on four key things, yes. right? Talk about that. So our daily pages, we have a daily and a weekly edition, but the daily pages focus on your schedule, your to-do list, what's for dinner, yeah. and notes. And that's it. There's nothing else. You know, I felt so released when I heard those four areas because every night when I get home from work, everybody that <laughs> happens to me at my, be at my house goes, what's for dinner? They want to be fed every day. <laughs> like, why don't you people decide? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Another thing you say that I think is so key, it's key to life in general, is savor the circus. You know, Absolutely. you can be frustrated by it. You can use, lose energy over it. You can mm -hmm. rail on about it. But if you don't learn to savor it, you miss yeah. the joy. I believe that there are seasons of life that are not changeable. Yeah. So I have three very small children. That's what it is. But I'm bummed. But there it is. <laughs> and so I have to sit in the yeah. mess sometimes mm -hmm. with a screaming toddler or two. Yeah. Um, with a, a messy house, I have to learn to sit in the mess and let it be. It, okay. Let yeah. it be okay. And sometimes, and I'm sure you have deadlines in what you do with your business, yes. sometimes you've got to put the deadline on hold because somebody yeah. wants to read a book, right. and that's the memory. And my, I have a good friend, Rachel Shingleton, who said... Um, you can be juggling balls in the air and there will always be one ball that you cannot drop. Mm -hmm. You decide what that ball is and you never drop it. But yeah. be okay if the other ones have to fall down yeah. sometimes. Yeah. So much wise counsel in Emily's book. I just want to say that it's, it's a book for every woman to read, no matter what season of life you're in. Emily, we thank you for being here. Thank the you. book is called, it's just out, hot off the press, called yes. Grace, Not Perfection. Love the title. It's available in stores nationwide. The subtitle is Embracing Simplicity, Celebrating Joy. Who doesn't want to do that? Great to have you here. Thank, thank you. you very much. Mm -hmm. Gordon? Well, coming up, a boy's behavior changes for the better. Find out from his mother the reason for the change. Don't go away. Superbook is helping change lives all over the world. Luis loves Superbook. He's a good and thoughtful boy, but his mother says that wasn't always the case. My favorite episode is in the beginning. I've seen it 24 times. My favorite scene is when the angels fought in the name of the Lord God. 11-year-old Luis Philippe is a die-hard Superbook fan. He first started watching the CBN animated series when it aired in Costa Rica last year. He was so taken by the Bible stories that he begged his mom to buy the DVDs for him. But Luis and his mom weren't prepared for the impact it would have on his life. During the story of Abraham and Isaac, for example, Luis became so troubled that he had to leave the room. When I saw the story of Abraham and his son Isaac, I was sad. He was going to sacrifice what he loved most in the world. He went out into the hallway and kept asking, why, why? During another episode, Luis made a life-changing decision. While watching Superbook, I asked Jesus, to come into my heart and stay with me forever. According to his mom, Rebecca, God has used Superbook to change her son's behavior too. The change in Felipe has been incredible. I have seen him seeking more of God, being obedient, reading the Bible, and praying at night. Sometimes for me, my daughter, for our family. Something in my heart was missing. And when I watched Superbook, that space was filled because Superbook has helped me face my problem. 
Even the neighbors have noticed a difference in Luis. The way he talks is something sweet to see in a boy. And it is clear that he has become interested in the things of God. I would tell parents that haven't seen Superbook to sit down with your children and watch it. It is like sowing seeds into fertile ground, and it will help us as well as our kids. If you want to be a part of taking the stories of the Bible to the children of the world, there's one easy way to do it. Just join the Superbook DVD Club. How much is it? It's a gift of $25. And when you join, every single new episode of Superbook is sent to you. You get not just one copy, you get three copies so that you can share it with your church, with your family, uh, with friends, and you can be a part of sharing the stories of the Bible with the children of the world. The best part is that $25 goes into the production costs of new episodes, the distribution costs of the existing episodes, and then we're translating them. Uh, we want to translate them right now into 50 languages. And there's a broadcast map where you can see all the different languages. We've got 39 of them completed to date. We're on our way to 50. When we hit the 50, our goal is to say, okay, can we take it to 500 languages? Uh, the children of the world need to know the stories of the Bible. It will change their lives. It will introduce them to a God who loves them, a Savior who died for them, and you can be a part of all of that. Now, as a bonus for being part of the DVD club, you also get access to the first 26 episodes. So you're getting a lot more than just one, um, one episode in three DVDs. You're getting uh, access uh, through smartphones, cell phones, uh, all the wonderful ways we now have to distribute video. And there are multiple languages on the, these devices. So you get uh, a set of the languages, but you get a set of the episodes, 26 of them, so you and your can, family can enjoy them all. It's all made possible when people like you say, yes, I want to be a part of it. So if that's you, call us now, 1-800-700-7000, and say, yes, I want to be part of the Superbook DVD Club. Boy, it's one thing to talk about it. It's another to see Luis's story and to see that actually the come. change. Oh, my goodness. It's awesome. You know, it's really. very gratifying. You know, you, you put, put a lot of effort in this. This has been a 10-year yeah. um, uh, effort on the part of the whole team mm -hmm. to make these things possible yeah. and to see it works. Yep. And it works in all different kinds of languages, all different cultures. Yeah. The Bible is a universal book. Absolutely. Well, we've received prayer requests from some of you. We want you to visit us on Facebook if you'd like to send in your prayer requests. Here's Lisa who writes, Please pray for my husband, Glenn. He left my daughter and I three months ago. Mm. And then Steve writes, Please pray that God gives me wisdom for a major job decision. I'm just not sure what direction to go in. And then we have this one from Fern. Please pray for my daughter to be completely healed. And then this one from Lane, uh, Cameron needs healing. Mm. He lost his dad and grandmother and is struggling to care for his disabled aunt and uncle. He's only 14 and he's spiritually broken. Mm. Well, let's pray. Father, we just want to lift up Lisa to you first of all. God, you are the one who uh, created family. It's the base structure of our society. Would you bring Glenn home to his family, Lord? Would you give them wisdom and rebuild their family unit again? And then God, for Steve, you ask us to seek you for the decisions in our lives and you have a perfect plan and purpose for him. God, I just pray that you would clearly give him wisdom to know uh, what the answer for his major job decision is. Show him which direction to go in. He desires to please you. For Fern, we pray for her daughter for complete healing. God, you know every bit of her healing need. You know her body from top to bottom. Would you just extend your, your eye to her now, Lord, and would you heal her from the top of her head to the bottom of her toes? And Jesus, we lift up Cameron, a, a young boy who has lost so much and been asked to be responsible for so much. Jesus, make yourself real to Cameron. Would you show him how to rest in you, how to draw his strength? from you? Would you give him comfort by just knowledge of your presence and your realness, God, that you know him by name and what you ask him to do, you will provide for. So God bless and encourage and strengthen him in his face, faith and also in his life circumstances. Thank you that you're our dad and we can come to you with all of our needs. For those that are 
unspoken that haven't written in, but who are praying now for things in their lives. God, meet them right at their point of need. Be their Abba Daddy. Empower them to walk through the storm and come out on the other side with you. Thank you for your faithfulness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you need prayer, we're here for you. All you have to do is pick up the phone and call us. 1-800-700-7000. Here's a word from Proverbs. Do not withhold good from those to whom it is due when it is in your power to act. Let that be a watchword for you. God bless you. We'll see you again.